Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this lesson on Friday, this mathematics lesson on Friday. I hope that you are joining us today. Um, thank goodness it's Friday. That's all I can say. It's been a long week, um, but it's been a good day. It's my daughter's first birthday today. So um, yes, I'm celebrating that. Um, we had a cupcake this morning. Well, she didn't. She's too young, but you know, we blew out a candle and cupcake. Anyway, <laughs> besides that, yesterday we did um, trigonometry and we did 2D and 3D trig and I said to you that if we'd finished we would move on to sequences and series and we didn't finish. We finished sequ we did finish the trig but we didn't finish enough to move on to sequences and series. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start a sequences and series. Now I'm going to start off nice and slowly because what happens is in schools you guys do arithmetic pre preparations, APs and GPs in grade 10 usually or arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences in grade 10 and then they skip over grade 11 and they introduce you to grade to quadratic sequences in grade 12 and then they expect you to remember everything that you got taught in grade 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the stuff in grade 10 that you should have done from grade 10. If you don't remember it, this is why I'm going through it with you to make sure you do remember it and do understand it. Okay. Um, and if you do know it and do understand it, that's great. Then what I would suggest you do is maybe come back or watch the video with half an eye. And then when you get to the questions parts, try and do the questions by yourselves ahead of me. Um, otherwise, come back to a recording of the video and then fast forward ahead to the questions and then do the questions. Okay. And remember, please, that Turnable is a fully full service platform. It provides question papers, it provides questions, videos, answers, um, the exam papers, everything else. So please feel free to go through all those resources and make sure you guys understand the stuff. Also, if you join the grade 12 Turnable Maths class, then you can message me and you can say, hey, Miss Rennie or Candice, whichever you prefer, um, we didn't quite understand what you did in that question or we really need help with a certain section and then I can lend my ears to your requests and I can move you that way. Okay, right, so let's get started. So the first thing we do is we're going to do revision of arithmetic sequences. Now, you guys know arithmetic sequences. You can also know them as APs, which stand for arithmetic progressions. It's the same thing. Whether you say arithmetic sequences or arithmetic progressions, it's exactly the same thing. Just depends on who's teaching you. So the definition. It's a sequence of numbers in which there is a common difference between any two consecutive terms, and that is called an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic regression. Now, what you need to know is a common difference means is that the difference is the same, common, that's what we mean by common, it's the same every time. And two consecutive terms means one after the other. In other words, if you've got term one and you've got term two and you've got term three, what we add to term one to get to term two has to be the same thing that we add to get from term two to term three. Okay. So the general formula TN for the arithmetic sequence is A plus N minus one D where a is the, or Tn is the value of the nth term. A is the first term. D is the common difference. And N is the number of terms. So in other words, if I tell you that we've got the sequence, and uh, let's just do one, no, let's do two, four, six, eight. And I want to know what is the next term. We can use this formula to determine the next, I mean, it's pretty obvious that it's going to be 10, but we can use this formula and let me show you how we're going to do it. First of all, A is the first term of the sequence, which in this case happens to be 2. So we'd say, okay, A equals 2. The common difference, do you agree that every time I'm adding 2? Okay, there's plus 2, there's plus 2. So I can say, well, D is 2. 
the number of terms. I want to know what this term is. This is term one, term two, term three, term four. So this is term five. So you agree that n is five. So now I can find out what the value of this term is. I can go tn is equal to a plus n minus one times by d. a is two plus n is five minus one times by d, which is 2, which was 2 plus 4 times 2. And 4 times 2 is what? I've done something wrong here. Common difference is 2. First term is 2. This is 5 minus 1 is 4, and the common difference is 2. 4 times 2 is... I haven't done anything wrong. I'm just tired. Sorry. So it's 2 plus 8, which is 10. Sorry, that's pretty obvious. And we know that that's 10 because it's going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so that is a really silly example. Really silly example. And But it shows you how we can use this formula to find the nth term. Okay, so now let's look at a better example. They've asked us to determine the common difference, which is your D, and the general term for the following. In other words, they want this TN is equal to a plus n minus 1 d, but they don't want it in that format. They want it with a number for an a and a number for a d so that we can work out what any term is. Okay, so the first thing we do is we go, okay, fine, let's just rewrite this. We've got 10, 7, 4, and 1. To get from 10 to 7, what do I have to do? I do agree I have to subtract. 3. To get from 7 to 4, what I do? I subtract 3. And to get from 4 to 1, I have to subtract 3. Okay. So do you agree that my common difference, D, is equal to minus 3? That's pretty easy. Okay. So the common difference can either be an addition or subtraction because really what you're doing is you're adding negative three because remember in maths you need to understand that you're never really subtracting a number you're only adding a negative number as far as they're concerned okay so our common difference is minus three now they want the general term in order to work out the general term we need a and we've got d so a is the first term which is obviously 10. so do you agree we can go tn is equal to a which is 10 plus n minus 1 times by minus 3, which is 10 plus times a minus is a minus, it's minus 3n, minus times a minus is a plus 3, so that becomes 13 minus 3n, and that's tn. So what is it saying? That is saying that the nth term will be given the value of 13 minus 3n. Okay, awesome. But maybe we should test that. So let's test it. Let's test it. Okay, this here is term one. This is term two. This is term three. This is term four. And do you agree that there would be term five, whatever this is? So let's say we want the fifth term. Now we know that the common difference is minus three. So one minus three should get me to minus two, right? Let's see if that works. Let's find the nth term here. So we want the fifth term. So we're going to go t of the fifth term is equal to 13 minus 3 times by 5, which is 13 minus 15, which equals minus 2. Ta-da! It actually does work. So that's a good, quick, easy way. Obviously, this is very easy. If they asked you for t of the 157th term, you're not going to be writing out all of these till 157. That's crazy. So you need to know that you can trust your formula for the general term by working it out. Just showing you what that would be. This would be 13 minus 3 times by 157. And you'd pop that in your calculator. A lot of windows open today. Okay, and you go 13 minus bracket 3 times 157 close bracket equals 
equals, and it's minus 458. That's minus 458. So no, that's why we have these general terms. We don't want to have to keep adding into the sequence a common difference to find out what the 157th term is. We can just find the value of it using this general equation. Okay, let's move on. Now it says determine the 13th term, so we want T13, of an arithmetic sequence if the first term is 2, so they're telling us that T1 is 2, the second term T2 is 6, and the third term is 10, T3, I apologize for that, I don't know why that's popping up. Hmm. Okay, I don't know how to get rid of that. Just, just ignore it for a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, just let me sort something out here. Where's my taskbar? Ah, oh, I've locked the taskbar in there. Okay, we'll worry about it. So, just ignore that. T three is equal to ten. Um. So then. Oh, gosh, and that's really upsetting me now. And now, now it's got to work. There we go. Um, okay. I know how to get rid of it. Just wait. Customize. And what was it? It was this funny F thing. And hide icon. Okay, there we go. Now it should go away. Now it should go away. Okay, fine. So if it doesn't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to get rid of it now. So anyway, so um, T1, somebody must have been playing with my laptop. I apologize for that. So T1 equals 2, T2 equals 6, and T3 equals 10. Right. So what do we have? We know actually that these are, we would normally write them out as 2, 6, and 10. I do not know why they're writing it out like this, but there we go. So we've got 2, 6, and 10. Our first term is 2, which we know equals A. So we know that Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D, right? A plus N minus 1D. Our first term we know is 2 plus N minus 1. Now we need to find the common difference. So what do we do? 2 plus what gives me 6? Well, that's easy. It's plus 4. 6 plus what gives me 10? Well, that's plus 4. So therefore, this is 4. So it becomes 2 plus 4n minus 4 is equal to t to the n. And if you agree that tn is equal to 2 plus 4n minus 4, because that's just a plus, so it becomes 4n minus 2. So that's tn. So that's the general formula, but they didn't ask us for the general formula, they asked for the 13th term. Now, grade 12s, I know that if you were really desperate, you could have written out 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, etc., etc., etc. But actually, life's too short for that, okay? So we're going to just substitute into this. So we're going to go T13 is equal to 4 times 13 minus 2. 4 threes are 12, carry 1. 4 ones are 4 plus 1 is 52 minus 2. So it becomes 50. So my fifth, my 13th term has the value of 50. Now it says determine the arithmetic sequence if the third term is 10 and the 15th term is 46. Okay, so now this is the first level question that I think is actually grade 12 level. The others were kind of revision of arithmetic progressions and arithmetic sequences this year is actually a grade 12 level. So it says the third term T3 is 10 and they tell you the 15th term T15 is 46 and they wanted to determine the arithmetic sequence. Okay, so let's write this out. We know that Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. Okay, so therefore we can say, well, in that case, we've got T3 is equal to A plus 3 minus 1D, but that equals 10, right, from that. So therefore we've got A plus 2D is equal to 10. And we're going to call this equation 1. 
Now we're going to use this information. We're going to do a plus 15 minus 1d is equal to 46, right? Therefore, a plus 14d is equal to 46. And we're going to call this equation 2. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can either simultaneously equate immediately or you can substitute. I'm going to show you simultaneous equations um, just to show you a difference of how to do it because normally we substitute. So I'm going to go a plus 14d is equal to 46 and that is equation 2. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go equation 1 minus equation 2. So 1 minus 1 is 0. This becomes 2d minus 14d, which is minus 12d, is 10 minus 46, which is minus 36. So what am I doing? I'm actually subtracting. I'm going minus, minus, minus here. OK, the nice thing about this is these cancel. And you can divide both sides by 12. And you end up with d is equal to 3. Hooray! So then you can substitute either into, sorry, into this formula or into that formula. So I'm going to substitute into 1. So I'm going to sub into 1. And grade 12s, I would really strongly urge you to actually always make sure that you let the teachers know exactly what you're subbing into, okay? So we've got a plus 2 times 3 equals 10. So for a is going to be 10 minus 6, so a is equal to 4. So it said determine the arithmetic sequence. So what is the first term? It's 4. The next one's going to be plus 3, which is 7. Plus 3, it's 10. Plus 3, 13, etc. And there you go. And look, the third term is 10. Okay, nice. Let's do another example. I know we're not, but first we're going to look at some of arithmetic series. Okay, now there are a couple of proofs that you really, 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 really need to learn when it comes to, sorry, this is really bugging me. I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> okay, just a second. Um... I thought I'd got rid of it. Maybe I didn't say okay. Um, hide icon and notifications. Uh, hide icon and notifications. There we go. Finally. Okay, that's better. Much better. Sorry about that. Okay, sum of arithmetic series. Okay, now, as I was saying, okay, and the reason I want to get rid of it is because you actually really need to be able to focus in this section. For the simple reason that there are two theory questions that they love to ask in the first paper, paper one. And one is the proof of the sum of the arithmetic series, so I mean the sum equation. And the other one is the proof of the sum of the geometric series okay they love asking those you guys need to know how to do them you need to learn them if you can't learn them I, i'm sorry as i always say it is better to understand it than to learn it um so ideally i would prefer it if you understood it but if you don't understand it then I learn it okay you know what is usually good for me is i tend to do a combination i will make sure i understand it but now still learn a few key things that help me on my way so finding the sum of the arithmetic sequence okay when terms are added together it's called a series so if they're just written as in, separated by commas or semicolons then it's a sequence but as soon as you start adding them together then they're an arithmetic series so there are two formula for the sum of the arithmetic series this they're both on the formula sheet s then is equal to n over 2 times by 2a plus n minus 1d, where again n is the number of terms, a is your first term, and d is your common difference. Okay, nothing is different there. Or you can write it as s is equal to n over 2a plus l, where l is your last 
term, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to prove this because this is the typical one that they like to ask you. So the first thing you do is you have to realize that if you're writing out your series, right? Say it is one, three, five. What is happening is you've got this term is one. This term is three plus two. This term is three plus two two times two because we got three plus two plus two if the next one was seven it would be three plus two plus two plus two do you get it so the whole point about this is that sorry three plus one three plus two times one three plus one plus one plus one oh my hat sorry so anyway so the point is that you can see that you are adding the common difference and then if we're always referring to the first term, yeah, we've added the common difference twice. Yeah, we've added the common difference three times. And that's exactly what's been written here. They're saying, yeah, is the first term, term one, A. Term two is A plus D. Term three is A plus 2D. Term four is A plus 4D. So then the nth term, the last term, is A plus N minus 1D. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to let this dude here equal L. So instead of writing A plus N minus 1D every time, we're just going to write L. Okay, it's much easier for the last term. So if we write that out now, we can go, well, this is A plus A plus D plus A plus 2D plus A plus 3D plus, and then if we take it from the respect from the perspective of the last term, do you agree that the second last term, this is the second last term, is going to be L minus common difference. This is the third last term, and that's going to be L minus 2D, right? Now, we rewrite it the opposite direction. That's all we do. So we now, instead of writing out A, A plus C, we do it the backwards way. We go 1 plus L minus D plus L minus 2D plus L minus 3D, blah, 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 blah. And there's a reason for this. It's quite sneaky. We're now going to add them. So when we add this with this, we get A plus L. When we add this with this, what do we get? We get A plus D plus L minus D. These cancel and you end up with A plus L. If we add these dudes here, what do we get? We get A plus 2D plus L minus 2D and the D's cancel and we get A plus L. So do you, and this carries on for N times because there are N of these pairings, okay? So do you agree that we can say that the sum 2SN is equal to N times a plus l okay n of them so then it's very easy we're going to solve for s n so we divide both sides by two so the two cancels with this and you're left with n over two a plus l but we said that l was a plus n minus one d so we're going to substitute it in there and that becomes a plus bracket n minus one d which becomes n over two to a n plus n minus one d ta-da Okay, grade 12, you really, really, really need to know how to prove this. You really do. I would honestly, very seriously urge you to learn how to do it and practice it because if this doesn't proof doesn't come up, the geometric one will, will but, but one of them will come up in the finals. Okay, and generally what happens is it just works out that way, but especially at school, if you ask the arithmetic progression, definition or proof in the June exams, you'll be asked the geometric one in September or vice versa because the teachers like to cover it because they also know that it's going to come up in the finals. Right, so let's do an example. Okay, so we know that S of N is equal to N over 2 bracket 2A plus N minus 1 D and you do not need to memorize this. It is on the formula sheet. So now, it says find the sum of the first 100 terms. This is term A, this is term, which is term one. Okay, this is term two, this is term three. So do we agree we know that A is going to be 18? We also know that N is the common difference. So we're going 18 plus 13 plus eight, 
plus. So we've got to subtract 5 every time. 18 minus what gives you 13? And it is 5 minus 5. Thirteen plus what? Thirteen minus eight gives you what? Gives you minus five. We are adding minus five every time, so our d equals minus five. Our d equals minus five. Um. Right, so we know that the D equals minus 5 and they want the first 100 terms and 100 is our N, so N is 100. So we know that SN is equal to N over 2, which is 50, times by 2, times by 18, plus N minus 1, which is 100 minus 1, times by D, which is minus 5. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to put that in our calculator. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is put it all in our calculator. We're going to go 50 times by 2 times 18. Okay, and actually what I'm going to do is put a second bracket in. So let's just delete that for a second. 50 times by bracket 2 times 18 close bracket, plus 100 minus 1 is 99, right? So therefore I can just write it as 99 times minus 5, close bracket, close bracket, equals. So that's what that is, minus 24,650. Minus 24,650. And that's the sum of the first 100 terms, sure. Okay, so there we go. That is how we would work it out using that type of equation. Question. Now it says, given the series 14, 10, 6, all the way to minus 42, how many terms are in the series? Okay, so we've got Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. We also have Sn is equal to N over 2, 2A plus n minus 1d, right? Or we can say that it is equal to n over 2 bracket a plus l. Okay, so those are our options. Now the first thing they said is how many terms in the series? So let's just think about what we have. Do we agree that we have the first term a is 14? The common difference, well 14, to get to from 14 to 10, we have to subtract 4. To get from 10 to 6, we have to subtract 4. So therefore, this is minus 4. And we have the value of the nth term. This is the nth term. And the value of the nth term is minus 42. So we know that Tn is minus 42, okay? Which is also L, if you want to think of it that way. Right. So they want to know how many terms there are. So you could either, no, you have to use, you have to use this thing because we don't have the sum. So we have to use this formula here. So we're going to go Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. Okay, the value of the Tn is minus 42 is equal to A, which is 14 plus n minus 1 is what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find out the n, and the common difference is minus 4. So do you agree we can rearrange it and we can go minus 42 is equal to 14 minus 4n plus 4. If we add that, we've got minus 42 is equal to 18 minus 4n. So we can take the 18 across and we get minus 42 minus 18 is equal to minus 4n. So we end up with minus 60 is equal to minus 4n. And yes, I know this is slow. I know you could probably put this into your calculator over here, but I'm just showing you how to do it. So we're going to divide both sides by minus 4. 
that cancels that. Four goes into six once, remainder two. Four goes into 25 times. So n equals 15. So the number of terms, the number of terms is equal to 15. Now they say find the sum of the series. Okay, so we've got the options. We can either use either of these two. We can either use n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d, or we can use n over 2a plus l. But since I now have n is 15, I've got the first term, it's 14. I've got the last term, it's minus 42. I'm going to use this dude, yeah, because it's way easier. So I'm going to go sn is equal to n, which is 15, over 2 times by a, which is the first term, which is 14, plus the last term, which is minus 42. Okay. So you would 15 over 2 times by 14 minus 42. So let's pop that in our calculator. So we're going to say, right, let's clear this. And we're going to go 15 divided by 2 equals multiplied by bracket, bracket, 14 minus 42, close bracket, equals minus 210. So that is minus 210. So the sum of the first 15 terms of this is minus 210. Okay. Right, now let's start looking at the geometric sequences, okay? So remember, we've done arithmetic sequences, we've done arithmetic series. Now we're looking at geometric sequences, and yes, I know that most of you know them as GPs. So the first thing we're looking at is finding the term of a GP. So theoretically, it is Tn is equal to AR to the N minus 1. That's the formula, where Tn is the value of the nth term, a is the first term and N is the number of terms and R is your common ratio. Okay, so let me just explain this. With sequences, we've got a common difference, what, which was said what? That basically the T3 minus T2 had to equal T2 minus T1. With GPs or geometric sequences, there's a common ratio. It says a T3 divided by t2 has to equal t2 divided by t1. Okay, there you go. t3 divided by t2 is equal to t2 divided by 1. So let's just use a little example. Um, let's give you 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Okay, so now if I looked, the always you have to check what this is. Let's say I'm saying to you get this and you need to identify if it's a arithmetic sequence or arithmetic, I mean a geometric sequence. So let's look at this. If we go arithmetic, we plus one to get to two, then we plus three, two to get to four, then we add four. That is not an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence says there's a common difference. It means we have to add the same number every time. So now let's look at this. We're going to call this T1, this T2, this T3, and this T4. It really doesn't matter. So now let's say we had T3 divided by T2. Well, T3 is 4 divided by T2, which is 2, which gives us a value of 2. Now we've got T2 divided by T1. We're getting what? We're getting 2 divided by 1, which is 2. There you go. So we can see that this is obviously a geometric sequence or progression because it does have a common ratio. Okay, so let's do a question and we're going to launch straight into a question that I said is kind of like your level and not a grade 10 level. It says determine the 17th term of the geometric sequence. So you want T17. Now remember Tn is equal to AR to the N minus 1. Okay, remember, TN is equal to AR to the N minus 1. Now, TN is 17. They want that. They tell us that the first term, oh no, actually this is quite easy. This is 3, 9, and 27. I got excited because I misread that. Okay, so this is 3, 9, 27. So do you agree that that is a 
right? And it tells us a geometric sequence. We immediately know that we can say, well, this is term one, this is term two, and this is term three. And to get the common ratio, all we have to do is go term two divided by term one, which is going to be nine divided by three, which is three. So now we know A is three, we know R is three, and we know that N equals 17. So we can go T17 is equal to three, multiply three to this 17 minus one, which is going to be three to the times by three to the 16. And then we have to pop this in our calculator. Okay, I'm gonna do it slowly and then show you something. So this becomes three to the power of 16 multiplied by three is this number here, 1291401163. Okay, 1291401163. 1291401163. Let's see if I remembered it correctly. Yes, okay, good. But now, do you not realize that these actually are the same as three to the 17? So if I get out my calculator and I go three to the power of 17, I should get, there we go, 129140163. There you go. Okay, so that was actually quite an easy question. If you didn't find it easy, no big deal. I mean, I have been doing this for a couple of years, so therefore these questions do seem to be a bit easy. So if you're struggling with this, what I really suggest you do is you re-watch the video, pause it at the beginning of the question before I start talking or writing about the question, and then try the question for yourself. Great tools, it's so easy to sit um, in front of a laptop or a cell phone or whatever and watch these videos and go, yeah, 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 I know, I knew that, I could do that. There's a very big difference to you actually going and doing a question for yourself, okay? And that's the trick. That's seriously the trick. Okay, so let's move on. Now it says, which term in the sequence is equal to 3125? So they're going TN is equal to 3125 and they want to know what is N. Okay, they want to know what N is. We also know that TN is equal to AR to the N minus 1. Okay. So what is the first term? The first term is 1. That makes life easy. A equals 1. R is a common ratio. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So therefore, I can very safely say that R is 5. And now they want to work out what is N. Okay, so we know 3, 1, 2, 5 is equal to 1 times by 5 to the N minus 1. So therefore, we can say 3, 1, 2, 5 is equal to 5 to the N times 5 to the negative 1. Do you agree that's the same as saying is equal to 5 over 5? That's an N. Okay, so because of that, what can we do? We can times both sides by 5. So what do we get? 5 times 5 is 25, carry 2. 5 twos are 10, 11, 12, carry 1. That's going to be 6 and 5 threes are 15 is equal to 5 to the n. 5 to the n. All right, now, how do you do this? We want something that is the n. And I was wondering if you remember your logs at all. Okay, the log goes like this, 2 to the 3 is equal to 8, it's equal to 8, log 8 base 2 equals 3. So 2 to the 3 equals 8, log two, 8 base 2 equals 3, or you can think of it this way, that log 8 base 2 equals 3. Okay, right. So what we could do is we could rearrange this as a log. We could say, well, in that case, we have got log of 15625, all to the base 5 is equal to n. And we're going to do that on our calculators. And the reason I'm saying was because some of you don't have a calculator button that looks like that. Then you have to realize that this can be rewritten 
as log of 15625 all over log 5, and then you have to do the sum like that. Okay, so let's do this. So we go log, and that's base 5, and inside the brackets is 15625, and then we go equals 6. So n equals 6. So what we're saying is that the sixth term, the sixth term is equal to 3,125. Okay, now we're getting to a question I kind of like a lot. Okay, it's this type of question. It says, in a geometric sequence, T3 equals 12. So you've got T3 equals 12, and you've got T4 is equal to 96. Oh dear, it's back. Never mind. I'll delete it after this. So therefore, T3, remember that this is Tn equals AR to the N minus 1. So we know that this is going to be AR to the N. N is 3, so it's going to be, okay, let's make it 3 minus 1 is equal to 12. So we know that AR squared is equal to 12. Okay, we're going to call that equation one. Yeah, we've got a r to the four minus one is equal to 96. Therefore, a r cubed equals 96. So now that is equation two. So now what we need to do is we need to simultaneously equate. And you need to figure out who to solve for, either r or r squared or a. So I'm going to solve for a. I'm going to say a is equal to 12 over r squared. And I'm going to say a is equal to 96 over r cubed. And I'm going to let these two be equal. Okay, so I'm going to go 12 over r squared is equal to 96 over r cubed. I'm going to cross multiply. So I end up with 12r cubed is equal to 96r squared. And now you need to be careful because it's very easy to just cancel and then you lose some of the answers. So what you really need to do is take them across. So we're going to end up with, where's my pen gone? Hmm, there it is. Okay, sorry. 12r cubed minus 96r squared equals naught. So 12 times 8 is 96, so therefore we can say that we can take out a common factor of 12 and r squared, and we're left with r minus 8 equals 0. Therefore we can say r equals 0 or r is equal to 8. There we go. Now we've got that, we can easily work out the first three terms of the sequence, okay? Because once you've got r, all you need to do is work out your a. Now, can r equal 0? Well, r is a common ratio, which is basically a fraction, and therefore it cannot equal 0, because then we don't actually have a sequence that is adding up. Okay, so that is not true. So we now we're going to look at this thing here. So we can substitute either r into either this term or this expression or this one to get r cubed. And I choose this dude over here. So I'm going to say a in the middle is equal to 12 over 64. Okay, so if I divide both the top and the bottom by 4, I get 3 and here I get 1 and 16. So that's 3 over 16. Okay, so that is our A. And at this point, I'm actually going to love and leave you and say to you, for homework, for Monday, if you have time and I'd really like you to try this, please try and do these two questions. I've helped you find the A, you've got the R, so all you need to do is think about how you're going to find the first three terms and then how you're going to find T12. Right, grade 12s, I hope you have an awesome day. Cheers.